strands of truth. It definitely did change how I perceived myself. Advanced DNA testing technology helping people discover their roots, reunite with long lost loved ones. I got excited. What a gift at this stage in my life to suddenly find this whole new family. And even make important life changing decisions. And I think it's changed the trajectory for my health and the health of my family. We'll take an in depth look at how this groundbreaking science has impacted the world we live in today. If we had not employed this genetic genealogy tool, um, it's entirely possible this case would have gone unsolved. Why some are raising concerns. The law is constantly trying to race the science and catch up with it. And what it could all mean for the future. I think we envision a day where pretty much everyone has access to their DNA. This is Strands of Truth DNA Genetic Testing. Hello. And thank you for joining us for this KTVU Fox 2 News special. I'm Mike Meebeck. And I'm Gassia Mikaelian. Your DNA is part of what makes you uniquely you. In many ways, it can tell us who we are and where we came from. That's why so many people these days are sending in their samples to be analyzed. Now, today's DNA testing technology is incredible. All it takes is a kit you can order online and a simple sample of your saliva. With that, you can find out about your genetic makeup, your family history, even your health. Now, in this half hour special, we will go through it all from new uses in the medical world, including the cancer screening that played a key role in one Bay Area woman's decision for treatment to how it's helping to solve criminal cases like the one involving the infamous Golden State Killer. We'll also explore new questions about where all that information goes and how accurate it really is and why some say a lack of regulation could lead to problems in the future, even for people who've never submitted a sample. First, though, we want to start with family and how a 23andMe test led one San Francisco woman to her birth parents and half brothers and sisters thousands of miles away. Her name is Tracy DeLuca. And while she did know she was adopted, she did not know anything about her biological family. KTVU's Paul Chambers has her story and tells us about their happy reunion more than a decade after sending in her DNA. A chance meeting on the 23andMe DNA genetic testing website forever changed Tracy DeLuca's life. Hey Tracy, this is Jim, Alex's father. I'm like, who's Alex? Who's Jim? I don't know you people. Born to teenage parents, DeLuca was put up for adoption, something that wasn't a secret. She says she was always curious to find her birth parents. My birth certificate was sealed, so I didn't actually have any information to go off of to do a search. So this was the easiest way to kind of get to the information. In 2007, she gave her DNA to 23andMe. I spit in the cup and sent it off and waited. She waited and waited. With a few hits, but nothing major, that is until June of this year. 11 years after joining, DeLuca was matched with someone who she shared a little more than 6% DNA. I'm not really sure what compelled me to finally go back and look again. And then when I did, I saw that I had a, I think it was a second cousin match. That cousin was only 12 years old. And the boy's father reached out to DeLuca, thinking maybe she was related on his wife's side. Instead, it turned out he and DeLuca are family. He didn't know about me. Mm. He never knew that his aunt had had a baby. Four days later, the story unfolded. He says, uh, you have two brothers, and I've spoken with the oldest one, and he would like to talk to you. In August, DeLuca flew back to Ohio to meet her birth mother and two new brothers. When we pulled in the driveway, she like slammed the door shut on everybody else. And she's like, this is my moment. Like, it's just me and her. One piece of the puzzle solved, DeLuca then learned her birth father also lived in Ohio four hours away. But this wasn't a big mystery. Since she knew he was around, they just never connected. He'd released his information to me saying he was open to being contacted, but that was like 20 years ago. By the end of August, DeLuca flew to Ohio yet again, this time to meet her birth father and his two other daughters, one of whom was getting married. For the first time in her life and with the revelation she has two new families, DeLuca is the oldest child, and this new discovery means a lot to the man and woman who raised her since she was two months old. They're much older, and so they were like, we've always worried that when we pass on, you know, we wanted there to be other people there to love you. And thanks to her DNA match, she has many people to love. Paul Chambers, KTVU, Fox 2 News. 
This advanced DNA testing technology is being used in a variety of ways. Just recently, during the deadly campfire in Butte County, authorities used DNA samples submitted by family members of the missing and compared them to the remains found in the burn zone in an effort to identify the victims. This is new technology and, and from what I understand, uh, has not previously been utilized uh, in an, an event of this nature. Massachusetts-based Andy DNA is providing its service to the county for free. The company uses rapid DNA testing, which can process the DNA in two hours. So far, authorities won't say how many victims the technology helped identify. For some, genetic testing can provide potentially life-saving information about your health. That was the case for two sisters and cancer survivors from Menlo Park. KTVU's Christina Rendon tells us how one sister's advice to take a physician-ordered test help the other make an important decision and the warning from experts before you do the same. For Kim Garlinghouse Jones, cancer has been a thread weaved throughout her life. I started out as an oncology nurse because that was an area of interest of mine. She studied breast and ovarian cancer in families not knowing she would eventually develop breast cancer at age 40. The mother of four girls was nursing her youngest when she felt a lump. I had been so healthy my whole life and how could I have breast cancer? Turned out that I was advanced enough to need a double mastectomy and chemo and radiation. Years later and after a second diagnosis of tongue cancer, Kim took a genetic test. It showed she had a check two gene mutation. So when her sister Meg was diagnosed with breast cancer two years ago, Kim urged Meg to take a genetic test through a company called Color Genomics. Color, based in Burlingame, is a physician-ordered genetic test available online. The at-home saliva test looks for gene mutations linked to hereditary cancers and heart conditions. She did testing, uh, genetic testing with Color Genomics um, to determine that she did not actually carry and learned that she did not carry that mutation. That information saved Meg from having a double mastectomy like doctors initially recommended. Instead, Meg had the lump removed. She is incredibly relieved and grateful that she has that information. And she wouldn't have that information if I hadn't pushed to have genetic testing done in the first place. Amy Blanco, director of the Cancer Genetics and Prevention Program at UCSF, says color is a diagnostic genetic test. The diagnostic tests, something like what color is doing, is looking at these genes that are not common but associated with very high risk. Meanwhile, Mountain View based 23andMe is the only direct to consumer test that has FDA approval to test for genetic risk, cancer risk, medication response and carrier status. Emily Drabant Conley, vice president of business development for 23andMe, says her company's technology is groundbreaking. We've been able to show to the FDA that people can really understand this information that was part of the FDA authorization process. We just get tremendous feedback. We have a really high rating from our customers. But some customers are downloading their raw data and taking it to a third party service for interpretation. A recent study by the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics revealed a 40% false positive rate in the results from direct to consumer genetic tests and misinterpretations when analyzed by third party services. The concern? This could create false reassurances or lead to unnecessary medical treatment. We have significant disclaimers when people download that raw data that that data is processed in a different way. We're not standing by any interpretation of that information, um, but, but people have taken that and then they get these third-party interpretations of it, and that's where the confusion lies. She says 23andMe stands by the test, but notes it's not a substitute for visits to a healthcare provider. Blanco agrees, saying anyone with a concern about a specific inherited risk should seek a genetic counselor or specialist. There's all kinds of, of direct-to-consumer genetic tests out there. And as long as people realize that for entertainment purposes, that's fine, it's, it's unlikely to really be useful for true health care. She adds the color test is more comprehensive. Kim says Meg was required to speak with the color genetic counselor to interpret the results. Both sisters are in remission. What have you learned from all of this? That genetic testing is going to revolutionize health care. We don't need to be afraid of it, and I think it's changed the trajectory for, of, for, of my health and the health of my family. Christina Rendon, KTVU, Fox 2 News.
And on KTVU.com, we have posted more on this story, including the study about false positives that Christina mentioned, so you can read it for yourself. Just scroll down to our Strands of Truth section on the homepage. From an only child to being one of 36, up next, how a Father's Day sale on a popular DNA test kit led one East Bay woman to a big revelation about her own father. But first it was a shock and a little numb and then a lot of gratitude. Also, decades old cold cases now solved. From the Golden State Killer to the NorCal Rapist, how this new technology is providing investigators new clues and loved ones some closure. Plus why some fear it could lead to bigger problems in the future. Welcome back to this KTVU Fox 2 News special. This next story starts with a Father's Day sale on a 23andMe DNA Ancestry test kit. And it ends with some shocking news for one Oakland woman about her own father. As KTVU's Rob Roth tells us, that woman spent most of her life thinking she was an only child, only to find her biological father was a sperm donor with dozens of children. There's the baby bump. That was Susan Simon before she was born. And growing up as an only child in the 1950s and 60s, she never questioned that her loving dad was anything but her biological father. I asked my dad that I remember, why didn't you have more kids? And he said that they had trouble conceiving. But that wasn't the whole story, a story that didn't reveal itself until last year, more than 60 years after Simon was born. That's when Simon, who lives in Oakland, decided, just for the fun of it, to send a DNA sample to an Ancestry website. There was a Father's Day sale on 23andMe, and so I thought now was as good a time as ever, and so I did the test, and six weeks later, you get the results. And when those results came back, at first it was a shock and a little numb and then a lot of gratitude. What Simon learned from those results was that she was definitely not an only child, but had 14 half-brothers and sisters, a number that has since swelled to 35 siblings and counting as more matches keep coming. It turns out her biological father was a serial sperm donor with a career that spanned more than 25 years. I know he was a doctor. I know he lived till the age of 90. Um, he wasn't a med student when he did this. She doesn't know why he did it. I was numb for about 10 days trying to sort through my feelings. I kept trying to see if I was angry. But she wasn't angry, quite the opposite. I got excited. What a gift at this stage in my life to suddenly find this whole new family. And some of those new family members held a reunion last year. We blurred out all but Simon's face to respect their privacy, but we can say there are some family resemblances. How cool is it to meet these people that you have all of these weird things in common with? Um, it was great. And more recently, she met up with a half-sister in Seattle. But she says some siblings have shown no interest in keeping in touch, and one half-brother told her he found what their biological dad did was wrong. I think he feels that to donate so many times um, is immoral. Simon's mother died when Simon was a teenager and never spoke to her about it. Her father, the man who raised her, died in 1997 and never said a word about it either. And for Simon, that's okay. For me at that time, ignorance was bliss. And then finding out now is just so fun. In Oakland, Rob Roth, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Well, this incredible technology is also causing concern about privacy. A study published in Science Magazine projects that 60% of individuals with European descent even those who have not done genetic testing can be identified based on the information in DNA databases. That's because of other relatives who submitted their DNA. But several direct-to-consumer DNA testing companies, including San Carlos-based Helix, say your information belongs to you and only you. We don't sell your data, we don't provide it to any third parties because we fundamentally believe that you're in control of that information. Helix and other direct-to-consumer companies caution people who submit their DNA to be careful about where they share their information, namely sites that take in raw DNA data 
for more analysis. Those third party sites could make your DNA accessible to others, including law enforcement. And for some investigators, it's the break they need to solve many decades old cases. Kate Views Amber Lee shows us how the technology is being used and why some say it raises ethical and legal questions. I was really angry ferociously angry when I saw him. Nicole Ernest Pate describes the moment she was finally able to put a face and name to the masked man who raped her in a Roanoke Park home 27 years ago. Suspect Roy Charles Waller appeared in court in September, accused of attacking at least 10 women. When he turned around and, and for a split second looked at me in the eye, um, and it was a split second, that was a bone chilling, like I felt like the blood was leaving my body. Ernest Pate was among the victims who attended the hearing. What I saw was, if I get out of here, I'm going to kill you. Should have killed you that night. For years, she lived with the fear that he would return. I'd hoped every single day that I would get the call that he was caught, um, but I thought it would never happen. But it did happen after almost three decades. In September, authorities identified and arrested Waller, a longtime UC Berkeley employee suspected of being the NorCal rapist. Investigators say they used JetMatch, the genetic genealogy website, the same method used successfully just months earlier in the highly publicized case of the Golden State Killer and East Area Rapist. It led Contra Costa County investigators to suspect Joseph D'Angelo, a former police officer who's accused of terrorizing his victims from 1976 to 1986. There is no question in my mind that Joe D'Angelo is the Golden State Killer. Paul Holes, retired Contra Costa County District Attorney investigator, came up with the idea to upload DNA from a crime scene onto JetMatch, where a relative of D'Angelo had uploaded DNA. We did everything without success. Law enforcement has been chasing this guy for 44 years. Once we started down this genetic genealogy road, it took us four months with five people plus some outside consultation to get it accomplished. But with success comes ethical questions in a field that is largely unregulated. Typically what happens with a relationship between law and science is that science moves forward faster than the law does. And the law is constantly trying to race the science and catch up with it. Hadar Avaram, a professor with UC Hastings College of Law, says the use of DNA information uploaded to ancestry websites raised privacy concerns. Because familial DNA exploits similarities in the genetic profile between relatives, they might find some information about people who not only did not voluntarily submit their information to the website, but didn't even know that that information was avail available on the website. In October, Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office announced it had solved a cold case from 1985. 57-year-old Virginia Vincent, a Danville real estate agent, was raped and murdered in her apartment. Investigators used a method called familial DNA search. They worked with the California Department of Justice to solve the case, using the state's criminal database to come up with a list of relatives of the unknown perpetrator. If you're convicted of felonies or arrested for felonies, you have to give a DNA sample. Cold case investigator Rick Jackson helped solve the case. He says a piece of rope used to tie the victim was tested last year. Obviously, when you tie a rope and you tighten it, you're, you're putting a little good grip on the ends of the rope where you're tightening it. And so after 33 years, we, you know, swabbed the ends of that rope. The DNA was sent to the California Department of Justice to do a familial search in a database of criminals. There was a hit from a man who turned out to be the brother of the perpetrator. That man, Joey Lynn Ford, killed himself in 1997 when confronted by police after a 16-year-old girl accused him of sexual assault. Still, investigators wanted to confirm that the dead man was responsible for the crime. Detectives got a court order to exhume the body of Joey Lynn Ford, who's buried here in Fairfield. They obtained a DNA sample from a femur bone, and they say it was a match. But one geneticist with UC Berkeley says law enforcement's use of criminal databases for familial matching has an inherent bias. It doesn't represent all population groups equally. Certain population groups, like African-Americans and Latinos, are all represented in those databases. 
That means that when you do familial searching, you're more likely to be falsely investigated. It'll be interesting to see how it all evolves over the next year or two. Alameda County District Attorney Nancy O'Malley says solving crimes is about following leads to find justice and describes DNA as a remarkable forensic tool. If we test DNA against the person, the suspect, and it doesn't match, we know he's not the person. And that's just as important as identifying the guilty person. For Ernest Pate, she says she believes in science. We never stop fighting, and we won. She says a suspect identified through DNA gives her confidence that justice will be served. Amber Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. One person takes two DNA tests and gets two very different results. Coming up, how one woman's experience raises questions about the accuracy of DNA test kit results. It's exciting to make discoveries like this, but if they're not true, it's heartbreaking. Welcome back to this KTVU Fox 2 News special. DNA test kits are an easy way to find out more about yourself, and for many, the results are surprising. That's the case for NG Salama, a fourth-year PharmD candidate at UCSF. NG says she took a 23andMe test as part of a course and learned she was mostly Saudi Arabian and not Egyptian, even though much of her family still lives in Cairo. I'm very critical of the politics of Saudi Arabia, and I have a lot of pride of, in my Egyptian background, but at the same time, I recognize that your genetics do have a very pow potentially powerful effect on your health. Angie tells us she still identifies as Egyptian, but that the results of the DNA test will influence her decisions when it comes to medical care. But how accurate are those results? That's the question from one woman who used two different DNA test kits and got two very different outcomes. Reporter Tia Ewing shows us the discrepancy and talks to an expert about how it may have happened. This is my mother, mm -hmm. my father. Jennifer Smith says flipping through family albums helps her reconnect with the past. And I just want to learn as much as I can about my history. She recently took that learning one step further and decided to try a DNA testing kit. Ancestry.com, very popular. You know, they're in all of the commercials. Everybody talks about them. Smith received the kit, followed the directions, and mailed it back. And just like the lady on TV says, you have to spit in the tube. It's not ladylike, but that's what you do. Then she waited the four to six weeks. And I was shocked. Smith's breakdown from Ancestry showed 97% European and 2% Asian. I'm a black girl. I am not a Jewish white lady. I'm, I'm black. My parents were black. She contacted Ancestry with questions, but says a rep told her the results are accurate. She told me there was no way they could have made an error. Smith decided to try again, but this time she submitted a DNA to 23andMe. And the results were very different, but they were not a surprise to me. The 23andMe findings showed 70% African for Smith after Ancestry's findings showed none. Both kids can't be right. One of them has to be wrong. The, these DNA tests for ethnicity are entertainment value only. William Gilliland is a biology professor at DePaul. He says DNA kits can be great for connecting family members and finding relatives, but the science for ethnicity testing isn't as concrete. There's nothing that confident for ethnicity. There's no diagnostic nucleotide. You can say this person is from Europe, this person's from Africa. So what happened in Smith's case? The simplest explanation is that one of these test results is just wrong and the tubes got mixed up or contaminated or something. We reached out to both Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. Ancestry tells us it's incredibly unusual to find variations of this magnitude. The company says it's best guess that the tubes were mixed up before they were sent to their labs. 23andMe says because companies use different algorithms to make Ancestry assignments, you can find differences when comparing tests from different companies.
It's exciting to make discoveries like this, but if they're not true, it's heartbreaking. Tia Ewing, Fox News. And that does it for this KTVU Fox 2 News Special. Our coverage continues on KTVU.com. Just look for the Strands of Truth section on our homepage. Thank you for joining us.